and it's built on a scale that models the dimensions of the Earth, and that scale is derived from a key motion of the Earth itself. It challenges us to think again about everything in the ancient world. The fact that it incorporates the dimensions of our planet in its, in its key dimensions, that you can take the height of the Great Pyramid and multiply by 43,200 and you get the polar radius of the Earth. You can measure the base perimeter of the Great Pyramid, multiply it by the same number, you get the equatorial circumference of the Earth. I won't bore you, but that number is not a random number. Graham just said 43,200. Or, you know, and, and even in the way we still measure time today, if you think about how do we measure the length of one orbit, one rotation of the Earth on its axis, the meridian lining up with the center of the sun, we've divided that into seconds, right? Minutes, hours. 24 hours is the exact period of the Earth's rotation with respect to the sun, okay? 24 hours times 60 times 60 means there's 86,400 seconds exactly in that period. On the moment of vernal equinox, the, the period of time of darkness and of light are exactly equal, 43,200. That number is the scaling ratio of the pyramid. If, you, if we were to take that, the pyramid as it is today on the Giza Plateau, enlarge it by a factor of 43,200, as Graham said, the height of it is literally within a few hundred feet of being the polar radius of the Earth. And in fact, the range of error is within the range of error of our most accurate modern satellite surveys.